So that brings us to the end of these technique progressions on how to hit on the rise. We've gone from as simple as possible to pretty much what you're going to be using in an, in an everyday match, but there are still many more layers on top of this. We don't you know, have the, the time to go over all of them today, but just to give you some ideas on other things to work on. Once you've mastered the ability to go all the way through your swing, take the ball on the rise and consistently send it back into play, you can start to work on moving forwards on a short ball and taking it on the rise. That takes very early identification that it is coming short. You have to act quite quickly or maybe already be a little bit inside the baseline to get in the right position early enough to take it on the rise. If, you, if you're standing back here on the baseline just watching your opponent hit, and you're like, oh, hey, it's coming short, and then you react, then you're not going to get there early enough to actually hit it while it's on its way up. And that's fine. But ultimately, if you want to use this as an attack, you have to, be, you have, to have pretty good anticipation. Uh, another option for using, uh, using an on-the-rise hit is when you're really pressured by an opponent. The shots that we've been receiving and the shots that I recommend you begin with are relatively neutral. Yes, they're landing very, very deep. And so from that perspective, it's kind of by default an offensive shot but they're not moving terribly fast. They didn't really have any spin, and that's where you should start. But once you get a really good handle on that, start practicing taking the ball on the rise when it's really aggressively hit from your opponent and really deep. Kind of add that little bit extra layer of, of um, difficulty. And then the third uh, different way you can experiment with this is on the run. Start in the middle of the court and give uh, get a ball machine to feed to you or get a coach or a pro to feed you out to the corner high and deep in the corner and hit on the rise while you're on the run and then recover so that you can practice taking time away from your opponents after they've hit you know, quite a good shot really deep and into one of the corners. So those are just you know, three of the, the first things that came to mind. Uh, you can add a lot of different other variations of this same shot depending on where you are on the court but it all starts with that foundation of getting the timing down and having the ability to calmly guide the ball send it back whether that be with a somewhat abbreviated swing or a full swing if you don't have the timing and the the calmness to be able to go through and hit it correctly then all of those other situations are, are pointless or meaningless because you don't really have the core fundamental skills to actually put that different scenario into play, if that makes sense. So start with what we've done so far, and then you can add on top of that from there. Work your way through the progressions, be patient, and I promise you that it'll pay off big time on the court when you, get, when you find yourself in what would you know, typically be a tricky situation for a lot of players. If you have these skills, you'll find yourself getting out of that trouble and really without even any anxiety or pressure at all. So put in the work and I know it's gonna pay off big time for you on the courts. So in